Good afternoon, everybody. This is Alex Borak from Inbox 25, Marketing Automation Made Easy. Thanks for attending today's webinar, Creating Impacting Workflows Using Sugar CRM Secondary Modules. At the end of today's webinar, there will be a short Q&A. If at any point during the webinar you have a quick question, just throw it into the chat bubble. I will get to as many as I can, and any questions I happen to not answer during the webinar, I will put into an email following the demonstration. Today's webinar is being recorded live and will be up for further viewing on our knowledge base as well as on our YouTube channel. So with that being said, let's uh, jump right into it. So for today's agenda, I'm first going to talk about our integration with Sugar CRM uh, and namely the secondary module integration. Then I'll move into examples of automation that you can leverage using the Sugar CRM secondary modules. We'll go into best practices and then we'll look at reporting. And then we'll move on to Sugar CRM where we'll go over the modules inside the actual application and then move right into Inbox 25. So first, with Inbox 25's integration with Sugar CRM, we allow you to sync with all of the native modules of Sugar CRM, including the secondary ones. Before we move on, though, I just have to mention that our compatibility with the modules of Sugar CRM, we're compatible with stock as well as custom data fields within any of these native modules of the instance. So if you'd like to leverage uh, the information within these modules, just creating a simple custom data field will suffice. Uh, it's also important to note that Inbox 25 does not integrate with entire custom modules. So if you do have a custom module within your, within your CRM instance and you're looking to uh, leverage that data for marketing purposes, it is strongly advised that you push that data to a native module of your CRM so that we can pick up on it. So now let's talk about the secondary modules a little bit. So we commonly see clients use the opportunities, calls, and meetings modules of Sugar CRM. Now the other secondary modules to note would be the quotes, contracts, and support cases modules. Opportunities are typically used to track revenue coming in as well as revenue lost, um, as well as possible revenue that may be gained. Calls are usually used to log phone interactions and track progress and notes made by each of your uh, sales reps to, pros to, prospect, to prospect and client. Meetings, similar to calls, uh, are typically used to track face-to-face -face or online uh, interactions between a sales rep and a prospect. Uh, quotes and contracts are sometimes used interchangeably, but are used to primarily track the sales and negotiation process uh, from when a product or a service is quoted or if a prospect is entering into a long-term arrangement or agreement with your organization. Finally, support cases, pretty self-explanatory, are mostly used for support-related issues. So our automation campaign manager can facilitate many ways to leverage opportunities, creating calls or meetings, and reaching out to support cases or contracts and quotes uh, in a seamless and simple manner. It all depends on the potential and possibility to turn processes you're currently doing manually uh, into an automated workflow. Uh, so let's go through some examples of how you can utilize each secondary module within the Automated Campaign Manager. So first, uh, these would be used as conditions within the Automation Wizard. Uh, create, if, a unif if an opportunity was to say have a probability of a certain percentage, um, maybe you wanna create opportunities based on product interested in. Uh, so the condition here would be a data field, possibly, um, and the opportunity would be the action, creating it. 
um, using calls as a condition if a call has a status of say held uh, maybe you want to add a record to a target list or to a segmented list and possibly increase their lead score uh, using meetings as a condition uh, if a meeting similar to calls if a meeting was not held uh, maybe you want to send an email apologizing uh, to the prospect for missing the meeting and hopefully maybe linking a landing page in the email for them to fill out when they're next available to meet with you. Uh, using quotes, if a quote is above uh, 50,000, uh, maybe you want to add a tag of, oh, I don't know, a good quote or, or high value quote to the record. Um, and for contracts, if a contract is in a specific negotiation stage, uh, the sales stage would, in this case, be negotiation slash review, uh, then you can put the record into a content stream, uh, sending them one email a week uh, for four weeks, just apprising them of the facets of the contract that they're in negotiation with, as well as maybe bringing in some brand awareness about the company that they are trying or you are trying to have them sign a contract with. And lastly, using support cases, uh, if a support case was closed, uh, maybe you want to send the record or the lead uh, an email with a customer satisfaction survey, once again using the Inbox 25 landing pages, um, just basically asking you know, how the support was, has been, any feed, feedback they can provide, something along those lines. Um, now, the one module I did not mention, the condition, of course, are the opportunities. Uh, as, as a condition for opportunities, you can leverage, um, let's say, uh, you know, going back to the other example, a probability percentage is above or below. You know, maybe you'll want to uh, either augment their lead score or possibly route them to a particular sales rep uh, whose expertise is to close those uh, opportunities. And now, these are just a few of the countless workflows that you can create uh, to automate sales or marketing driven processes using Inbox 25's automation engine. So let's now go over some best practices when trying to figure out and ascertain uh, if the workflow you're looking to incorporate with a secondary module um, is not only feasible, but is beneficial uh, to your broader marketing processes. So first and foremost, testing is crucial. So you definitely want to conduct a test to see uh, if the workflow uh, is working. Uh, and not only working, but you want to make sure that it's actually improving the process um, efficiently uh, rather than actually getting it muddied down and, and bogging you down in other processes that you then need to create as a product of this workflow. Um, you definitely always want to use sample data, never use live data for a test. Um, and don't give up immediately. Um, if there is just a, one small missing piece to a workflow, uh, leveraging or using a secondary module that will make the process more efficient for you, uh, maybe there's a workaround in there. Um, for example, creating a custom data field uh, that Inbox 25 will automatically update upon matching a conditional statement for a secondary module. You definitely want to utilize uh, our lead scoring tool in conjunction with your automation. Uh, lead scoring is definitely a very important tool with marketing automation. In a nutshell, it allows you to assign numerical values to your leads to help qualify them. Uh, so using lead scoring and, and for this webinar, particularly referencing secondary modules uh, is definitely in your benefit if you can utilize it not only properly, um, but correctly and also in a way that gives you more tangible evidence of what constitutes a sales-ready lead. <clears throat> and last but not least, I mean, get creative. Uh, there's no need to limit the workflow to a specific action. See how far you can go. See how m much more efficient you can make it once you develop you know the sort of simple one two three step process um, so now let's go over the reporting aspects so of course uh, leveraging the secondary modules and and utilizing them you'll always get reporting for your automation manager 
um, for example, who is in the automated workflow and at what point in the workflow are they. Um, that's something you will always be able to utilize as a pro marketer user. Um, we also have a specific uh, opportunity uh, report that you can look at, <clears throat> which will give you all of your open opportunities and allow you to look at specific ones. And of course, we also give you access to the timeline intelligence report, uh, essentially a snapshot of all activities and engagement, as well as any information or modifications made to the record. So if a call or a meeting or an opportunity is associated with the record, you can certainly view that and filter within the timeline report. And uh, because you're in sync with your opportunities, you will be able to see opportunity open versus one uh, throughout multiple tools of the platform, um, as you'll see in just a few minutes. All right, so now that that covers a broad overview of not only the integration between Sugar and Box 25, uh, namely with the secondary modules, um, I now want to take you into our demonstration Sugar instance and just want to briefly go over each of the secondary modules, where they can be found, um, and how you would go about utilizing them within Sugar. And then I'll move over into Inbox 25. So if everyone can see my screen now, sorry, about, sorry for that, folks. <clears throat> so right now, I'm in the home screen of my Sugar CRM environment. On my navigation bar, you can see the Opportunities module. And from here, I can go immediately to create an opportunity, or I can view all my opportunities. Moving over, I can see my quotes module. Same deal, I can create or view my quotes. Moving over, I see my calls module. So this is where I'll go to either log a call or view my calls or possibly import calls from an external database. Um, I can also look at a sample call. This is a call that I logged that I named test. And you can see the record is associated with. It was an inbound held call. Uh, and I can also see the user associated with it, as well as any contact associated with that. Uh, moving on to meetings, you can schedule a meeting right from the view, or once again, you can view your meetings. Now, one secondary module I didn't reference directly, but it is certainly a secondary module, are the tasks. Now, whereas opportunities, calls, meetings, support cases, quotes, and contracts can all be leveraged for conditions. Tasks can only be used as an action within the automated workflow. Um, and a task is essentially a to-do that you're giving a, a sales agent or an assigned record owner uh, to complete some sort of activity, whether it be creating a call. Uh, if you didn't want to log calls directly for your sales reps, and instead you wanted to assign a task and allow them more autonomy to create their calls or meetings, uh, then you can simply just create a task for the assigned record owner uh, to create a call or to set up a meeting with that lead. Uh, cases, so this is where I will either create a support case or view my support cases. And if I just click the down carrot, I'll be able to see the contracts module. Now, as a Sugar administrator, you will certainly have the flexibility of changing your navigation panel to show the modules that are more pertinent to you and create sub-panels for them. Um, this is a pretty out-of-the-box navigation view. The only change I made was adding contracts to the uh, down carrot. So now I'm going to switch over into Inbox 25. And I just want to take you through a few workflows that have been created and finalized, uh, which demonstrate good uses, uh, beneficial uses of the secondary modules. Uh, so the first workflow I want to take you through is leveraging the calls module as a condition, and it's call not held, assign to closer. Uh, so you can see immediately right from this campaign, in terms of reporting analytics, I'm first able to drill down into who was touched by this workflow by clicking the uh, highlighted value three, and I can see three records that have been plugged into the automation. I can also see any uh, open and one opportunities associated with that workflow. 
uh, as you see from this, I have a combined total of uh, almost $20,000 in possible re revenue from the records associated with this workflow. So now let me go into it so we can see how it was structured. Okay. So right now, I have a workflow which is looking to match two conditional statements from the calls module. So the first conditional statement is if the status, which is a stock field within the calls module, uh, equals not held. So the, if the call was not held. Now, I also have another conditional statement which is actually leveraging a custom data field that I put into the calls module that I labeled call temperature, and if it equals cold. So, in order for this workflow to fire off, uh, a sugar agent or a sales rep needs to log a call within the account, sugar CRM accounts, so the accounts module of sugar CRM. They need to not only log the call in the status field is not held, but they also need to input manually the value of cold within the custom data field. So, if those two conditional statements are met, what are we doing? Well, first, we're assigning the record to our closure sales rep, so a particular sales rep, and then we're alerting the sales rep via email that a record has been plugged into this workflow, and then we are going to actually set up a new call for the assigned record owner. The subject is call to close. It will start in an hour. It will have a status of not held. They can make it from 9 to 5 a.m. It should last about 30 minutes, and they can try uh, five days, five times for the day. Uh, also, they can log it any day, Monday through Sunday. I also put a little note in there, uh, so please call to close this account. They balked at the initial call. So this is automatically going to be within the note or the description section of that call. Perfect. And then last but not least, we're actually going to put the record through a content stream where they will receive three emails, uh, two emails a week on Monday and Thursday. So this is a workflow which is not only leveraging the call as a condition, but also as an action to further advance the sales process. And at the same time, while we're reaching out to them directly, we're also nurturing to them with email campaigns just to let them know a little bit more about the organization, about the offers uh, that they're being given. The next workflow I want to go through is leveraging meetings. So this one is meeting held, send thank you email. Uh, so this is very similar to the example I gave a little while ago where you're going to send, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, I missed you email if the meeting was not held. However, this workflow, fairly, sim fairly simple, is just simply leveraging the meeting as held. If the meeting is held, then they will receive a thank you email after a minute once the meeting was logged as held. Then <clears throat> the lead score for this record will be increased by 50 points. Uh, for this particular scenario, a meeting is very important to the organization. So if a meeting was held, there is a very high chance that this lead will uh, purchase from the organization. So therefore, the lead score has increased drastically. And then just to demonstrate using the Inbox 25 automation engine, we're also going to add a tag of successful meeting. So for further automations, if I want to target every successful meeting held, then I will certainly be able to do that. And then last but not least, we're actually going to set this record as inactive. Uh, for this particular example, these records, the meeting has been held, that is the last link of the chain, they no longer need to be marketed to or counted as an active target. So they are now going to be rendered inactive within the system. Now the reason I added the tag is because if I decide I would like to reactivate those records in about three months and just send a, oh, I don't know, generic how are we doing email, then I will simply be able to leverage the tag to turn those records back on. So a little forward thinking. So that was the meetings module that we were using. 
Now, this next workflow, and please notice that the workflows have touched a range of different records, but we see that a lot of records have gone through this workflow. So this is any opportunity in May, June, or July uh, that is set to expire, we need to retouch. So for this workflow, I'm leveraging the opportunity as a condition, and what I'm looking for is expected close date. So if the expected close date is after April 30th of this year, but it's before August 1st, so once again, just as the workflow uh, highlighted, any op in May, June, or July, uh, you know, what do I want to do? Well, first I want to add them to a target list, which I'm naming Recycle Target recycle rather excuse me then I'm going to reassign all of these ops equally to my sales reps I'm then going to alert the sales reps that records have been assigned to them and then I'm going to use the tasks as an action to reach out the title of the task will be it's a recycle op reach out it will have a high priority and it has not been started and I'm letting them know this op is 30 days or less from expiring please reach out to determine likelihood of closing uh, or to renegotiate close date very simple so as I mentioned before instead of logging a call for the assigned record or owner or um, anything like that I'm simply creating a task for them and allowing them to determine how they'd like to reach out to the leads. All right, so so far we've done calls, meetings, and opportunities. Uh, now let's go into contract. So if a contract started in 2014, we're going to put through nurturing. So this is pretty much a mirror of the example I gave before regarding contracts. So if the contract has started after October 10th, 2014, we're going to put them through a nurturing campaign where we're going to shoot them one email a week. Now, so far, one email has been created for them and it's ready to be sent out. Uh, the purpose behind this workflow is content is going to be created on the fly as typically with a contract you are in regular communication with the prospect um, because there are questions that arise that happen to be uh, that happen to require attention some back and forth communications so as you're having back and forth communications with the prospect you will know what they're looking for so you will then be able to create an email on the fly using the content stream you can create an email from start to finish right within the builder without needing to exit the automated campaign. Um, what I will do is I will just simply add another piece of content to act as that second piece of content that after an engagement uh, you deemed that the prospect would like and then you simply plug it into the stream. So now at the next delivery interval, in this case every Monday, they will receive the next piece of content within the stream. So using the content stream of contracts, um, I guess as well as quotes, because it's sort of interchangeable, um, is very uh, prudent and it's very beneficial if you do need to create on-the-fly content that you would like the lead to receive that is pertinent to them. Um, and content stream is also important because even if you're not sending a uh, copy that is directly relevant to their particular contract, maybe you'll have a piece of content that is relevant to any and all contracts, so it's more universal. Uh, and you'll simply be able to pop it in right into the content stream, as the content stream is running 24-7, 365. Okay, so now let's move into the support cases. So, if a support case was closed, once again, this mirrors the example uh, that I provided within the Presidec, we're going to send them a sim simple thank you email. Now in this email, 
is going to, there is going to be a link to a landing page where we're going to ask them to provide their feedback, any and all notes that they have about the support process, what can we do better, right? But this workflow is actually taking it a little further. So we're actually going to wait two days for the person to not only open the email but convert on the form. Now, if they convert on the form, what we're going to do is utilizing one of the Inbox 25 integrations, Twilio, we're actually going to send them an SMS that's simply saying thanks for filling out the survey and, and plugging in their first name. We always appreciate good feedback. So we're, we're, we're leveraging multiple mediums of marketing, multiple channels of marketing rather, uh, to reach out to this lead to make it very personal and to let them know that, you know, yes, we do care uh, about your feedback and we do try to provide, you know, as much stellar support as we possibly can. So last but not least, a workflow associated with the quotes module. So this workflow is leveraging any quote that's valid until August 1st, 2015. Well, before August 1st, 2015. If that conditional statement is true, we're going to use calls as an action to re-engage. Once again, this is being assigned, uh, this is being logged for the assigned record owner. And then we're actually going to wait for three days. If the call has a status of not held after three days, we're going to wait five minutes and we're actually going to set up a follow-up call for them. We're then going to wait a week and if the call was still not held and has the status or call temperature rather of cold, see once again using a custom data field within a module again, then we're going to render them as an inactive target as they're not responding to direct communication. So there's a good chance that, or rather, hopefully not a good chance, but the quote may have fallen through. So we no longer want the record to be part of our active record limit. So those are but one example of how to use each secondary module to create a pretty impactful workflow within Box 25. Uh, now I showed you the reporting analytics that you get for an, an automated campaign by looking at the targets it's touched, uh, but now I do want to take you, if you want to look at your opportunities, you simply navigate to the reports tab of your dashboard and then go over to opportunities. From here, you're able to see any and all of the opportunities that we are in sync with. You get to see the name, the sales stage, the amount, the record that it is uh, associated with, as well as the assigned record owner. So these are just a few examples of the open opportunities. I also, we also allow you to filter, or rather uh, by uh, name, so from Z to A or A to Z. Also demonstrating that you are uh, in sync with your landing pages. If you go over to your landing page manager, once again, because you're in sync with opportunities, you're able to see opportunities uh, opened as a product of a conversion uh, and the opportunities one as well and the conversion rate. If you are implementing a lead scoring formula with the lifecycle manager, once again, you're able to see open versus one opportunities. And if you're looking to implement lead scoring for your secondary modules, I will just go into our scoring scorecard. And I will go to add a new rule and then I will go to the conditions for scoring. So notice, opportunities, calls, meetings, support cases, quotes, and contracts. Now, target lists uh, sometimes are referred to as a secondary module. Um, I would say it's more of a hybrid between a primary and a secondary because target lists 
are essentially allowing you to group records into a segmented list. Now, a target list can span multiple CRM lists. So a target list can contain leads, contacts, and accounts. Um, and target lists, in terms of in, for Inbox 25's purposes, can be targeted uh, for automation as a conditional statement, as well as can be utilized to dynamically add records to as an action. Now, as you see from here, for lead scoring purposes, we also do allow you to score your records based on membership or exclusion from a particular target list. Now, it's very easy to it's very uh, easy to explain that in order for a record to be matched into a workflow, they need to meet a conditional statement. Uh, for example, opportunity probability, call status, meeting status, uh, or support case status, status, uh, a quote that is valid until, or a contract that expires in. Now, if you understand that the conditional statements and operators being used will match records into a workflow, then you can take that logic into lead scoring and translate it into if a record meets the conditional statement for a scorecard rule, then their lead score will increase or decrease depending on the rule that you create. So let's just create one example rule together so you can see what I'm referring to. Uh, so let's target quotes. And we'll do the same example as the workflow, quote valid until, and I'll just say X date. And we'll save this rule. Perfect. Now I'll go into add a condition. And I will select a field. So as you can see, I have my stock as well as my custom data fields. So let's say it uh, is valid until, and let's say after, and we'll do today. So June 30th, 2015. So what do we want to do? Uh, well, I want to decrease their score. So let's do minus 10 and match it with minus 10 and we'll save this rule. Great, so now the rule is saved. Now all I simply need to do is play the rule. And as you can see, when you play a rule, not only the icon, but the border becomes green. And then I just need to play the scorecard itself. And there you have it. The scorecard is active, the rule is active, and as records meet the condition for this rule, they will be scored accordingly. Great. So uh, that's it for me today. Uh, the only quick thing I want to demonstrate is, well, how do you sync these secondary modules between Inbox 25 and Sugar? And that's very easy. Uh, as the Inbox 25 administrator, you simply navigate to your Sugar CRM dashboard, otherwise known as your SimSync tool. It's located in the top right-hand corner of your Inbox 25 application. Once you click that tool, you will be redirected to the SimSync, where you will then be asked which modules would you like to sync with? And you will see that all the modules have their own little area uh, where you can choose to sync opportunities, calls, meetings, support cases, quotes, contracts, uh, so on and so forth. As you see here, by me clicking on the dashboard, I'm able to see CRM performance. I'm in sync. What's my sync time? And as you see here, I am synced with all of my modules except for targets. I'm, a, I'm able to see any tasks created, opportunities, calls, meetings, quotes, cases, contracts. Okay, so now I will open the floor uh, to some questions. And I will give you guys a few seconds for any questions that have come up um, during or now after the demonstration. All right, I don't see any last minute questions. Um, I actually have a few frequently asked questions of my own, and I just wanna share them with you really quickly. So one is, um, how come I see on my SimSync dashboard this 
thing called SyncScore. Is that a custom module on your on my Sugar Serum instance? Well, you're almost there. So the sync score is actually a custom data field that Inbox 25 allows you to put onto the record profile for the primary modules of Sugar CRM. So by enabling the sync score data field, you will then have a custom data field within the leads, contacts, targets, or accounts modules uh, that will say Inbox 25 lead score. And this data field updates in real time as your lead accrues or loses points. Another question I have is, can I create an opportunity for a lead? The answer is no. Uh, the way that Sugar sees the native relationship between an opportunity and a record is on the, generally, on the account level. So it's definitely uh, important and probably most in your benefit uh, when creating opportunities to log them and associate them under an account. Now, of course, there is a relationship between accounts and contacts, but just make sure that you're exercising proper data structure and organization. Another question that I see is, I have contacts associated under an account. If I want a workflow to work based off of a call being held or not held uh, by any one of the contacts, where should I be logging this call? Well, it all depends on who you want to target. If you're looking to target the account, then you definitely want to log the call under the account so that it's associated with the account, and then you'll have a workflow that is targeting the account's module. However, if you're looking to target a specific contact, then you want to log the call under the contact record. So that way, we can pick up on that call being logged associated with the contact, and then the automation will fire off accordingly. All right, so those are all the questions I have. I'll leave the floor open for a few more seconds for any other last minute or follow-up questions. All right, I don't see any. All right, well, folks, uh, first of all, thank you very much for joining me on this lovely Tuesday afternoon, end of June. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on our upcoming webinar series. And if you haven't, please uh, enroll into our webinar being presented by my colleague James on Thursday. Uh, my name is Alex Borak, signing off. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your morning or afternoon. Take care.